Good morning, Shangren, Dama Masters, and brothers and sisters. Good morning, and very grateful to have the opportunity to share with you today. And I, I also get very inspired from the previous uh, sisters sharing. It made me reflect on my journey. You know, when I first entered Zhiji, and then, um, you know, all throughout this um, almost thirteen years, and. Yes, today I'm going to share with you about um, my journey also in Zhiji. And yes, I'm a Sydney Zhiqing, the youth, and I studied university in Australia back in 2007. So I, I'm lucky that I can join a group of youth and doing some good deeds and also learn Dharma together. And I moved back to Taiwan at the end of 2015. So um, in the beginning of six, uh, 2016, I joined um, the headquarter team and work as an administrator in the Apo. So I'm really lucky that I can um, see Dhamma Master Jenny almost every day and have a group of um, um, group, group of uh, friends and good companions to work in the Zhiji Bodhisattva path. Okay, and I'm also very lucky. In back in 2016 May, I luckily I can donate my bone marrow to a young boy or a young girl, and um, I hope that you know he or she now is returned to school and uh, become healthy. And I'm also hope I can meet them one day in the uh, one of the gathering ceremony. Okay, so um, um, since I joined Zhiji, I become a very eco-friendly person because I see a lot of um, environmental protection heroes. You know, uh, last year is Zhiji's uh, environmental protection 30th year. And most, it touched me the most is the the elder volunteers, they use their hands to do recycling every day, even is, if the weather is really hot or cold or even in, in a public holiday. And this is the most beautiful pair of hands that Dhamma Master say. And it touched me the most is Dhamma Master leads by example. You know, look at this piece of paper. You know, Master use four type of pens to, to write on the paper. And, you know, I can, I just feel that master really cherish all resources, even a piece of paper or a drop of water, they all have lives. And master also uh, use one pile of water for one whole day. So, you know, um, it inspired me to, uh, to be more mindful when I use um, when I use water or when I um, open the tap. So uh, in Zhiji, we also promote one chopsticks, you know, the, the, the wheat to save water. And, you know, master think all useful things should be cherished. It has to start from our hearts, implemented in our daily lives. We cherish even just a drop of water. And how does master save electricity? From the, um, from the books I read, a master only turned on a little lamp on her desk at night to save the light, so to save the electricity. So that's how I implement in my life too, in my home, uh, because I live in Hualien by myself. Um, so I also uh, try to, I also do that at night. I think, you know, it's more than enough. And I also learned from master killing, about killing things. And, you know, if, if, if we are not using the lights, why not turn it off? Master sometimes um, ask the disciples. And sometimes, you know, we, we unintentionally waste a lot of materials around us. So um, we have to cherish all the natural resources. And 
I also learned a lot from the Abo Master about gratitude, cherish, and saving. In the Abo, um, I think everywhere we can learn uh, Dharma and how Dharma Master uh, implemented, um, you know, cherish resources in, in their life. Look at this um, handers. It's actually the cover of the fan. And we all know that Masters is um, is not in Hualien now. Master is in Taipei and also uh, previously went to Taichung, traveling uh, to some part of Taiwan. And I'm, I'm really touched because um, Dharma Master is already over 80, 80 years old, but her spirit is amazing. And Master say um, she want to make every effort to fulfill grand vows. No words can describe my grave concerns upon seeing disaster and suffering beings, despite a lack in physical strength and energy. Still, I do not speak personal comfort and joy to relieve the suffering of all and to guide all to work the Bodhisattva path. I vowed to push my body to its limit. So um, I, I think you, you guys have must uh, watch the live stream about the, uh, uh, the end of year blessing. Every time I see Dhamma Master walking down slowly from the stairs, you know, um, just want to, you know, get closer to more of her disciple. And I'm really touched because, you know, uh, climbing down from the stairs is uh, is hard for her, and you know even you know in the even when she's travel you know her schedule is full from six a.m. to six p.m. You know um, there's a lot of uh, meetings and sharing or um, end of year blessing volunteer certification. The masters always um, be uh, you know be with us and lead by example of how she pushed her body to its limit. So uh, it really inspired me to cultivate myself more diligently. And um, since I joined Suji in 2007, I start to care more about the earth and the environment. Before that, I'm only a student, a high school student. Uh, so I don't really, you know, pay much attention to the to what what's happening around the world and uh, uh, and you know in Taiwan. And I found that you know um, throughout these thirty years, the earth is really overloaded. And just since I I am born, you know, the, the era, you know, with more and more kids coming out. And we really use a lot, a lot of resources. Look at uh, the recycling center in Taiwan. You know, the people like to use the, the, um, the disposal eating utensil. And in, in every corner, we have uh, the bubble milk tea shop, you know, the tea shop. So uh, people like to drink teas, you know, every day and just for the convenience, they don't bring their own um, cup. So that's why uh, Ziji Recycling Center always has a lot of uh, resources. And I'm grateful that um, back in 31 years ago, Dharma Master urged us to use our clapping hands to do recycling. I think uh, we also save a lot of uh, resources. Okay, so we all know that there are four major elements in balance, you know, fluctuating corners and heat that we can feel, you know, every day and frequent drought and floods. Now it's not climate change, it's called climate emergency. And I'm not quite sure if you are aware of this um, newest reports pub published by IPCC and it published in this year, 9th of August. You know, it says um, climate change is getting widespread, rapid and intensifying. So now we just watch a short news.
and give us the uh, insight of this report. As the world gets hotter, it's becoming more threatening. With terrifying scenes of mass escapes from Greek islands, burning amid heat waves, just as devastating fires also hit California. And the new report from the UN Climate Panel says there will be much more of this to come. With every additional amount of global warming, this major study concludes that temperatures are rising and that it's beyond doubt that human activity is driving them up. And all the warnings so far have been ignored. The world listened, but didn't hear. The world listened, but it did not act strongly enough. And as a result, climate change is a problem that is here now. Nobody is safe and it's getting worse faster. People in every region of the world are now feeling the impacts of more violent weather, fueled by the gases that we release into the atmosphere. It is an absolute fact that human influence is warming the climate. Um, and that's a very stark reminder um, that it is our activities which are changing the climate and affecting these extreme weather events. Um, and as the planet continues to warm, these consequences just get worse. Now, the scientists are more certain of all this because they've got satellites spotting in minute detail how the planet is changing. And teams of researchers out in the toughest conditions, gathering data to help work out what's likely to come next. The big question is how much more the planet will heat up in coming decades. So scientists explore different scenarios. In two of them, carbon emissions are cut rapidly and drastically and although the temperature does rise to potentially damaging levels, it will stay within internationally agreed limits. But in two other scenarios, which are actually much closer to where we're heading right now, we will see dangerous increases in temperature. And the most extreme option would lead to, well, catastrophe. But the message is there is still time to act. In one sentence, this report shows that um, Human action have got us to where we are, but human action can also uh, crucially decide how the future will look like. We are not doomed. There is a lot we can all do, like this project in Cambridge, to fit shades to keep the sun off the windows. This problem is only going to get worse with climate change. We're going to have, I fear, more and more heat waves, and they're going to be worse and worse. So. That's why I think it makes sense to shade your windows now, start learning how to adapt. But some changes will be far tougher to deal with. The oceans will keep rising. We just don't know how much. The scientists say that the level of the oceans is bound to go up almost whatever we do. Maybe by half a metre or so by the end of the century, if emissions are brought under control, but maybe by a metre if they aren't. And of course, that would be devastating for millions of people living on coastlines around the world. But they also can't rule out a much larger rise approaching two metres. It all depends whether the polar ice sheets start collapsing. Great ice sheets are already adding to the level of the sea, but this process may suddenly accelerate. Scientists aren't sure but the implications would be disastrous. India is now in the grip of flooding. Higher seas would make it worse. The science has never been so clear that we can head off the worst of climate change, but not all of it. So we urgently need to get ready. David Truckman, BBC News. Okay. Yes. Um... So from the news, I think we get the insight of, you know, the sixth assign assessment report of IPCC. And I strongly recommend you to Google it and do a bit of more research, watch more news or talk about, um, you know, the, the sixth ass assessment report. Um, there's, there's a lot of information and implement important message in, inside. And... You know, looking at this slides, I think it shocked, it really shocked me that, you know, the, the CO2 concentration, sea level rise, 
Arctic sea ice area and the glacier, you know, is breaking the records of, you know, the, the faster rate or the highest or the lowest level. So, you know, um, the climate is now really um, devastating at the moment. And it all depends on us how to act and how to influence more people around us. And IPCC also say, unless there are immediate, rapid and large scale reduction in greenhouse gas emissions, limited warming to 1.5 Celsius will be beyond reach. And I think Ziji, we, we are lucky. Dharma Master already let us know we have to protect the environment 31 years ago. And, you know, recent years, Master also keep, actually, I think around 10 years ago, Master already saying, you know, um, time is running out, time is running out. I think that is back in 2010, that's the, the time I heard Master saying that. Master says, you know, the disaster is happening more frequent and, you know, she's getting oddly as well. So we have to really act quicker. So master already give us, you know, teaching and show us we have to act quicker 10 years ago, you know, but really how many people really implemented, you know, saving, the, saving resources or adopting a vegetarian diet. And 2014 is the year that my nephew, uh, 19 years old, you know, because now he's only one. But the thing is that um, it's cool that, you know, and it's cool that IPCC warns the global warming will hit 1.5 degrees by 2004 and by 2040, sorry. And now, the global temperatures already rise to 1.1 degrees since the, the late 19th century. So, um, of course, we look up for a bright future for, you know, for the younger generations. But the thing is that, you know, global warming is, is really affecting uh, all of our life. And I think life will also be harder for the next generations because um, when the global warming hit 1.5 degrees, the, the droughts, flood, typhoons, and hurricanes uh, probably will expect to rise two times or more. So that's why we can see so many disasters happening around the globe at the moment. And also the, you know, last year is also one of the hardest year. Um, and also, I think this year too in Taiwan is really, really hot. And I'm not quite sure in Malaysia or um, in your country. And in Canada, Canada is one of the coldest um, country in the world. But this summer in July, uh, Canada sees the, you know, the heat, the heat record of 50 Celsius. And in USA, you know, we see that it's 56 Celsius. It's really, really uh, abnormal. And Taiwan this year also experienced the, the uh, severest drought in um, recent 60 years. And really, um, I think it's climate emergency now. And I recommend you to read this book. There's a... Uh, English edition as well, it calls The Uninhabitable Earth. Uh, it's written by a journalist, David, and it tells us a story of the future. I think um, it's uh, really a good book to let you know what's happening around the globe and the situation of uh, climate change. And really, what are we going to live for future generations. If you have daughters, sons, grandchildren, what are we going to leave for them? For them? And Barack Obama say, we are the first generation to feel the effect of climate change. And we are the last generations who can do something about it. So from the news that um, 
I played before, you know, we really need to act quicker and uh, really uh, make some stronger change. And last year, the Earth Overshoot Day is on 22nd of August. In what is Earth Overshoot Day? It is, it means that um, from this day, you know, we have used up all the resource, natural resources the earth can, can, can generate. So after 22nd of August, we are use up the resources and we kind of in debt and using the future generations uh, natural resources. So uh, last year, even with COVID, you know, we really don't really fly much and people stay at home. But the things that we still use up you know, almost 1.6 Earth natural resources. And how about this year? It's getting worse. The day moved um, almost one month earlier. It is uh, on 29th of July. Uh, we have used up the natural resource that we can generate this year. So now every every light you are turning on or you know uh, every tap of water you are turning um please be more mindful because you know the more we use the less we can use in the future or the future generation can use in the future okay so we all know this now global warming and you know the ipcc's report are we going to ignore or to act. Uh, let's welcome a speaker um, to share with us now. Listen up, people. I know a thing or two about extinction. And let me tell you, and you'd kind of think this would be obvious, going extinct is a bad thing. And driving yourselves extinct? In 70 million years, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. At least we had an asteroid. What's your excuse? You're headed for a climate disaster, and yet every year governments spend hundreds of billions of public funds on fossil fuel subsidies. Imagine if we had spent hundreds of billions per year subsidizing giant meteors. That's what you're doing right now. Think of all the other things you could do with that money. Around the world, people are living in poverty. Don't you think helping them would make more sense than, I don't know, paying for the demise of your entire species? Let me be real for a second. You've got a huge opportunity right now. As you rebuild your economies and bounce back from this pandemic, this is humanity's big chance. So here's my wild idea. Don't choose extinction. Save your species before it's too late. It's time for you humans to stop making excuses and start making changes. Thank you. Uh, this video this video is made by UNDP and we all know that in the beginning of um, November there is a COP26 and you know so many countries leaders uh, gather together to have meetings but I think the the, the con consensus is um, not strong and not strong enough or act quick enough you know many of the plans still um, 
planting in 2030, not cutting down forests and you know, uh, cutting down the fossil fuel slowly in some development country. So, you know, we all know that there is no planet B and it's, you know, it's relying on us, you know, human being and, uh, and all of us to act and do differently and to influence your uh, families or your communities. Okay, so what can we really do, you know? Um, I'm, um, I'm going to share with you the 30 um, eco-friendly actions that implement by me, myself. And, you know, all these 30 actions is a step-by-step -step journey, you know. I, I'm not like that kind of person to instantly that I can do so many things or so many eco-action or do many so many change at once. But this is all this... Um, since I joined Suji um, about uh, 15 years ago, is a step-by-step -step step for me to change. And I just try to go in greener each and every day. And I try to think about the environment or the earth or the natural resource that I'm going to come soon, you know, before I make any um actions, take any actions or make any decisions. Okay, so first, um, first action, of course, is vegetarian. And I'm a vegetarian um, 13 years, almost 13 years now. And since the day I changed, you know, uh, I turned vegetarian, I also one of my, one of the first uh, in my family to become vegetarian. Since then, I try to influence my families and my uh, friends and also Tsuji friends as well. So, um, and Dharma friends in Tsuji. And I think um, the more I know, you know, the more I, I want to share about um, how good is vegetarian to your health and to the environment and the animals. And um, five years after I became a vegetarian, I decided to um, turn vegan because um, I know the fact of how dairy products, you know, um, you know, look how cool is the dairy product. So I decided to turn to veg uh, to vegan. So now is I'm I'm a vegan for almost eight years now, and since last year. When the pandemic happened, Master Dama Master want us to uh, vow and also to encourage more people to become vegetarian, to promote vegetarianism. So I make a little vow that I want to um, influence three hundred people to take the challenge, take the thirty days challenge, e either to become a vegetarian or to to take the challenge for 30 days of vegan. And why vegan? Because I found in Suji, um, almost 90% of the, veg the, the vegetarians, you know, all, all, about 90% of people are vegetarian, you know, when they are already not eating meat. And very minor um, are vegan. And now, since last year, I, I, I really appreciate Malaysia start the 20-day 21 day healthier meat challenge. I think since then, um, now we have so many countries and regions also um, also hosting this event. So now I can see more and more uh, people turning uh, vegan or whole food plant-based diet. So since last year, um, 3rd of March, I, vow, I make this vow and I try to uh, promote it and share with uh, people who I know or who I might have some little connection with. And I invite them to take the challenge. And so far there are 2077 people um, have joined this 30 days challenge. And a lot of them, you know, after 30 days, they have turned um, vegan, especially like uh, brother Joe Huang, I think you must know him, uh, the, the pure practitioner. 
and also Isaac, brother Isaac Chu. Um, 13, 13 years ago, he influenced me to become vegetarian. Um, and then the last year, I invite him to take on the vegan challenge. And since then, he uh, turned vegan as well. So I just, you know, just, just with a simple mind, with zero distraction thoughts, and just one goal to promote uh, vegetarian. And I, I also, uh, I know probably uh, most of you are vegetarian. So um, if you are already vegetarian, I really uh, encourage you to try to take on the 30 days challenge to become vegan, or you can take the 21 days healthier meat uh, challenge in Malaysia as well. Or if you are in other part of the country, if they have this event, it's really good. I also joined in August, and I think it make, make me feel, um, you know, uh, lighter, you know, because we eat whole food, plant-based, and it's really, big, um, you know, a lot of nutrition, nutrition and very, very healthy diets. Okay, so I probably just quickly uh, run through this uh, few slides because uh, probably most of you are know already know this, the cattles really generate a lot of CO2 compared with other uh, like pigs, chickens, and all other uh, animals. So cattle really create a lot of uh, CO2, like the milk, cheese that you like to eat also come from cattle. And how much water is needed for for producing uh, one kg of, of uh, all these crops or the meats. Look at this, the, the ox is also one of the highest one. And the second still cheese, because really the cattle's really not only messing, they also eat a lot, eat a lot of um, crops and drink a lot of water. And even egg as well, because chicken, as well. So look at this, you know, uh, if you want to be more eco-friendly, you know, we have to make the change and plant-based diet is really healthy. Look at this um, plant-based diet is really uh, um, a lot of water we can save if we go uh, vegan or plant-based diet. Okay, so a few years ago, I also watched Cowspiracy. This is a very good documentary, give you a lot of insight of um, of our of how uh, how we impact the environments. You know, especially if you are still um, eating meat or drinking milk and taking dairies. And here, just a statistic, uh, just a statistic about the waste from a farm of 2,500 dairy cows equals weight from a city of um, wow, 400, 411,000 people. So it means one cow produce uh, 104, 164 people's waste. So we really generate a lot of uh, pollution as well. And this year, um, March, there is a new documentary. You can watch this in Netflix. It's called Conspiracy. You know, I mostly I know more about you know the factory farming and all this, but I really pay attention much to the what's happening under the sea, and it really uh, shocked me that you know eighty five percent of oxygen come from the ocean, and the world catches. 5 million fish every minute. And less than 1% of our ocean are not affected by commercial fishing. Commercial fishing is really a scary industry. You know, look at the nets, you know, they can catch all these dolphins or sea turtles and all these other, other species, other uh, fishes or marine lives, you know. And sometimes when they catch it, they don't need it and then they throw it back. But the thing is that probably um, the light of that um, fish is, is already um, very weak. 
So uh, I recommend you to watch this documentary and share with your friends and family to not let more people know about uh, the fact. And we all know that factory farming um, use more than 80% of the antibiotics. And look at this um, animals, they growing faster and bigger every day, just trying to, um, the people just want to, you know, earning more money, you know, and producing more meat to people in a shorter time. That's why um, I think the plant-based diet really uh, is really amazing. In the tw in the twenty one days healthier meat healthier meat um, project in Taiwan, we can see that so many uh, meat eaters or even vegetarian, you know, if we don't know how to eat healthily, if we eat too much sugar, oil, or carbohydrate, is is really not good for our health, but you know, the plant-based diet, if you eat the right food, 90% of the severe illness can be prevented. If you want to know more about this, you can also read this book called The China Study, um, written by the Dr. Colin Campbell. And there are so many resources at the moment when you Google it or a lot of documentary, uh, one of the, the document mentory called the game changers you know we can see so many athletes you know they they perform better when they um, take the vegan diet or the whole food plant-based diet so it is really a, a you know ultimate ultimate diets for us and for our health and this book is um i really enjoy to read this book as well about how to create a vegan world. Now master wants us to promote vegetarian. But the thing is that uh, <clears throat> if we don't know more or you know, know more about the fact of you know, uh, the animal or the sea or the environment, it's really hard for us to share with more people. And with healthier meat, we found that health is is one of the most effective way to promote vegetarian because we all want to be healthy so you can encourage your family or friend to start from one meal a week or a day first and sometimes you know throughout this uh, 30 days challenge um, weekly i will send a little message with a content with one or two short films and share with them about the fact of, you know, uh, why being vegetarian or vegan is good for the environment. Okay, so there's a lot of um, information on the website. We can all research and share with people to, to let them to make a decision on their own. And here is a healthier me challenge. It's really, really good. And we hope that, um, in we hope to promote this in globally you know more and more people in other country they can uh, they can host this event okay so second second uh, eco-friendly action that i take is um i never order takeaway meals because in taiwan eating is really uh, you know a man a, a thing that you know, it, it's a kind of big things. And with the pandemic, a lot of um, disposable utensils are used in the restaurants or takeaway shops. So um, I try to cook at home or just eat in if possible. So I never order takeaway meals. And I bring my own takeaway containers. So even a rice bowl in Taiwan, um, I use it and when I'm making decision of what to eat um, when I going on the business trip or travel I try to buy uh, things that are not wrapped in the plastic which is really hard you know in Taipei uh, train station um, two three three days ago and I you know just came back from Taipei um, I just want to buy some something but the thing is that everything like 
sushi or the bread or the buns, you know, everything is wrapped in plastic. So um, I choose to eat in, in, a, in a tofu restaurant just to have a, a soup and wrapping soup to uh, make myself um, feeling. So we can always make a chain, uh, make, make a better choice. You know, try not to create any plastic or um, make the, just try to make the world a better place. And fourth, I bring my own cups and straw. So uh, even, I, I, I really go to bubble, bubble tea shop. But, you know, if I really want to drink, I just bring my own cup and straw. So without it, I won't buy. And I bring my own environmental protection bag for sure if I want to go shopping. If I don't, I, if I forget the bag, probably I will just ask the, uh, ask them if there's any boxes or couple, uh, yeah, boxes for me to use to hold these things. But um, mostly I remember to bring my own plastic uh, shopping bag. Okay, so practice recycling. Uh, in Taiwan, we have a recycling station everywhere. So uh, in my spare time, I would love to, to go and do recycling. And in Taiwan, I'm not quite sure in your country, um, it's quite common that you know vegetables and fruits are wrapped in plastic, especially in the supermarket. In a local traditional supermarket, it's better. You know, most most of the things are not wrapped in plastic. But in the supermarket, you can see that you know, on the left. Uh, so I try to go to traditional supermarket to buy veggie and fruits, and I try to turn off light, lights and unplug devices to save the energy. And actually in a boat, you know, because with so many people living there, so many stuff, sometimes when I walk past, I can really see that the fan is on or the light is on. I will just try to turn it off, you know, when I see there's no people in, inside or unplug the, the power, power switch. And um, in Taiwan this year is really hot, almost 38 degrees, you know, in quite a, quite a many hot days, but I also have no air conditioning during summer. And this year, um, yeah, this year I, I moved to a colder, you know, because where I live in was in top in, in the top of the house. So this summer is really hot. So I decided to move to another uh, colder region and in July, just for two months, because you know I I don't really want to uh, turn on the air conditioning during summer. So just a bit of move, I, I think I can uh, try to save the energy and also um, you know live in a cool colder area. And of course, take a shower instead of bath, and try to save water. Use water twice. You know, master teachers. You know, when we wash vegetables or when we're taking a shower, we can collect all this water and try to um, use, give water twice life. And I carry a handkerchief with me, especially in summer, you know, it's really sweating and I can use this handkerchief. And I use cotton instead of um, toy, toilet paper. And this is, I think I try to adopt this um, since last year, I read a book and um, also in, in Europe or USA, there's a, quite many people trying to use the, the, the cloth um, toilet paper. And it's easy to wash and easy to dry. Just use the bathroom toilet flush before and then use the um, cotton. To, to dry it. If you are not used to this, then you can try to buy the non-cutting trees, uh, toilet paper, or the tissues. Now in Jingsi, they also have this product in Taiwan. Okay, so try to choose uh, bamboo shoots, to, uh, bam, sorry, bamboo toothbrush. Look at this, the, the, 
the head can also change, you know. Now there are some products really eco-friendly, you can look for it. And I use uh, cotton penny, uh, panty liners as well for almost four, four years now. Yes, so one is never too small to change. Our every choice like a vote for different future. And I also use vegan skincare products and like the bath soap or shampoo soap is all available. And even though I can drive and ride, but I choose a zero carbon car, bicycle. You know, I've been working in Hualien for almost six years now. And actually we don't have public, we don't have much bus in Hualien. You know, so really you have to be, you have to either drive or taking motorbike if you want to move, you know, move to A to B. But the things that I choose uh, bicycle and I also share rides, you know, with friends or colleagues to try to not, you know, generate or produce too much uh, CO2. Okay, so I also refuse excessive packaging with all this um, biscuits and snack, really, um, you know, um, burning. If you bury un under the, the soil, it's never, it's never going away. And with healthier meat, I'm really lucky. I kind of um, also not eating all this um, processed food anymore. <laughs> yes, so it's really easy for me. And do not waste food, avoid leftover waste, eat 80% full. This is also a teaching uh, by Dharma Master. We can uh, use the, we can save the 20% to help others. And in Taiwan, when we go to see the, you know, dentist, we always have a plastic cup, you know, there. But the things that um, since last year, um, I bring my own uh, cup when I go to dentist. Just try to save that cup. And I take the stairs instead of the elevator. Now I live in the, the eighth floor, so I try to climb it up and down uh, by the stairs. And I think few few months ago, I heard a four-year boy um, from Malaysia. He lives in 36 floors and sometimes he asked his, uh, his mom to um, take the stairs with him. And that really inspired me as well. You know, even a four year, four years old boy, you know, trying to save the, the environment. Okay, so uh, I, when I do shopping, I buy locals, you know, try to eat seasonal fruits and vegetables and choose local food. Now with the international world, in the shop, we can see a lot of food from, you know, other countries, you know, uh, plant-based milk or, you know, cheese, plant-based, uh, I mean, vegan cheese or especially all this type of um, product. Even potatoes in Taiwan, we can buy or apples we can buy from. Uh, different countries but I always choose I always make sure I, the product I buy is made in Taiwan or grown in Taiwan and this uh, I try to practice as well I try not to buy new clothes if I want to buy I buy second hand because we all know that fashion industry produce 10% of the humanity's carbon emissions and is the second largest consumer of the world world's water supplies. Okay, and I when I buy things, I try to read the ingredients. I try to avoid products containing palm oil. And one is for the health and another is because um, palm oil kind of cleaning large areas of rainforest. And I try to travel less by plane, you know, just going on the business trip, probably will, I will take the plan. But I, when I, when our family want to have a family gathering, we we try to uh, just.
just stay in Taiwan because there are still many places that we haven't been. You know, um, so just try to um, try not to fly as much. Okay, and I say power saving or dark mode for the products, you know, email system, mobile, or in your laptop, you can set a power saving. Because sometimes when when you go away for a meeting for one hour, two hours, some some people just you know leave the computer there and the screen is still on. But actually you can just set uh, the power saving mode probably three minutes after they can um, you know, turn off the screen and save it, save the electricity. Okay, so bills use electronic ones and delete emails, unsubscribe the unimportant emails. You know, I read the article saying that, you know, um, the, the emails, you know, if we keep emails in our box, email box, it also, you know, generate a lot of generate some CO2 as well because the server is still running, you know, and accumulate the, the spaces. So try to uh, delete unimportant emails. Really with this busy schedule, who will read the emails, you know, uh, probably one years ago, you know, so you can try to delete it and clear your mailbox. And of course I, uh, I use electronic uh, bills. So no papers. And when I buy things, I try to be more aware of, you know, how it produce, even when I eat in. So I choose zero waste food. In Taiwan, on the left, uh, on the right photo, there's a, um, a pancake, like in Taiwan, we like to eat. But the thing is that every pancake wrapped in a plastic bag. So since then, I, I'm, I, I just not ordering this type of food anymore. Just try to eat other, um, other products, other food. Okay, so last, uh, one of the last one, upcycling. Uh, in, in, I buy uh, Jinsu product, but the things that still generate packaging. So in Taiwan, um, we have, we call uh, the above master called that the packaging of the, the mixed grain and also the oat pack, you know, so try to cut, cut it neatly and they can make it into the shopping bags, upcycling. Okay, so now I try to really take, take the challenge and implement in my life. The zero waste lifestyle it, it, it inspire, I inspired by a 24, a 25 years old uh, university girl. And look at this. This is the, the four years of garbage that is generated by her, you know. So it's really amazing. And just try to produce, um, you know, just try to save the environment and try not to produce um, garbage if possible. And yes, so one person, no matter how, how much I do, I cannot make a big enough difference, but we need, what we need is for many people to do the right thing with us. So I hope that um, today's sharing uh, can give you some uh, ideas and probably some something for you to think about how you can change in your lifestyle, make the change. And in the talk of war between good or and evil, who will win? The side with the most people may not necessarily win, is the side that extra the most power that wins. So, um, that's why Master wants us to promote vegetarian diet to more people because we hope to be the change you know we want to see. And this is a very interesting uh, pictures uh, with the Guan Yin Guan Shi Yin Pusa with the hands like this. It looks like okay, you know. So every time when we pray, you know, to the da, to the Buddha and Guan Shi Yin Pusa or other we always pray for the you know the free 
uh, free free of disaster and harmony to society. But the thing is that Dharma Master Zheng Yin already let us know, you know, the tips to in to eliminate the disaster and COVID. You know, but you know, we all know the answer, but are we really, you know, saying okay or taking taking action? Um, Master already say the the wondrous medicine is to adopt and promote a vegetarian diet since last year, if uh, when at the beginning of the pandemic. So uh, let's let's try to become in the usual. This is the teaching by Dhamma Master um, in October. Master say the end of global pandemic is yet in sight. Hence, to stay safe, avoiding gathering is a must. Thanks to technology, we can make lights to reach far and wide a world with no bounds. Diligently learning as usual and caring as usual. Let eating and promoting vegetarianism become usual. Let bearing kindness and doing good also be usual, as only with pure grain love can all lives be protected and this is also the one of the last uh, master's teaching i want to share with you, with you today and i think um just don't underestimate to influence just one person like um like me you know i Brother Essex Chu influenced me 13 years ago. And since then, I try to be, you know, promote vegetarian with more people. And, you know, now he's promoting vegan to more people. So the thing is that, you know, we can always influence others by, by our actions, you know. And our life is one and only, so is our Mother Earth. So this year, the Earth Day, uh, the topic is called Restore Our Earth. So let's, um, let's try to save the environment by our daily actions and try to influence more people and keep promoting vegetarian. Thank you very much for the opportunity to share with me, uh, to share with you today and hope you... Um, have a good day. Thank you.